recap stories making the headlines in Nigerian newspapers. I have with me in the studio leadership and communication strategist Dotson Ojon and political technocrat Dr. Dayo Kayade. Gentlemen, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. I'm good sure you had a restful you. weekend. Yeah. Yeah, thank Happy God. Monday. And thank God for the rain that Absolutely. fell especially yesterday. Yes, yes. It was really good. I mean, time to rest. Good. All right, let's head straight to the papers now. And we begin with the news direct. Suspend charges on USSD code Mifiele, Pantami, others, banks, telecom operators. On the front page of the blueprint, Sands, ex-chief judge on Atiku Supreme Court journey, nobody can dictate to CJN on panel composition. Say opposition party's position laughable. To the front page of the Daily Trust now, 40 years after, federal government's 2 trillion naira Mambila power project yet to begin. 2.6 billion naira budgeted for compensation others. And on the front page of the Daily Times, power, anxiety as federal government sets to borrow fresh $3 billion, 5.864 trillion naira spent so far by OBJ, GEG, Buhari to rejuvenate sector with little to show. Stakeholders bemoan unimpressive power supply, demand improved supply. Our challenges by TCN, Jenko's discos. We'll be looking at that story shortly. To the front page of the Daily Sun, CBN stress test fallout. Banks in secret merger talks. Fear grips depositors. No cause for alarm, assure MFLA and DIC. To this day now, battle for implementation of minimum wage moves to states. Governors non-committal on commencement date await federal government secular on agreement with labor. And finally, on the front page of the Vanguard, border closure, how neighboring countries worked against Nigeria. Imports must come through ports. Finance minister, closures should be sustained pending firm agreements, says uh, CBN governor. Federal government gets a $3 billion loan for power sector. UK backs Jollof bond uh, issuance. Reps want federal government to clamp down on revoke licenses of discos, Jenkos. Well, gentlemen, we'll be looking at the story on the front page of the Daily Times. Anxiety. The federal government is uh, looking to borrow a fresh uh, three billion dollars. I remember last week the um, finance minister was saying that Nigeria does not have uh, um, well an issue of uh, a credit problem, no. so to speak, but a uh, um, generation problem when it comes to finances. And when it comes to the issue of power, we have seen how so much has been spent. There is an infograph here about 5.86 trillion naira since uh, 1999 has been spent when it comes to the issues of power. How much? 5.86 trillion naira. Mm. That's 5.9. Approximately 5.9 trillion naira mm. has been spent. And the question is, what really is going on? We keep <coughs> sinking money into the sector. You see, that is <coughs> always my fear about not just this administration, successive administrations since, since let's say 1970, I mean 1999. Yes. We're talking about provision of electricity now. And ever since, you have been sinking money into this aspect of our life. Until today, we are not seeing anything about it. How do you want us to have confidence in you? Go to Ghana. How much have they spent in giving their citizen electricity? I don't know whether you remember, sometimes early this year or late last year, they were celebrating a uh, 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 constant power, power supply. supply. Just there. And where are we today? Now, you're now going again to borrow three billion naira upon dollars. What? I mean, sorry, three billion dollars mm -hmm. upon what? There was another news there that I was talking about Mambila. Yes, I'm 40 that years I'm, on. That I've been spent on my. That Mambila, I think your, your station 
yeah. ran yes. a but documentary but yes. on yes. it. Yes. One, yes. one evening there. like that. Yes. I listened to that documentary. I was even planning that I would still talk to you people to give me that documentary, you know. When I listened to that documentary, I said, for goodness sake, look at how God has blessed us with the resources that a lot of people are looking for to be able to generate power. Why, why are we like this? Now look at the budget. Even look at the budget. In that budget, we were made to understand that for us to have infrastructure, or which power is also part of, that's why they are increasing our VAT from 5% to 2.7. So 7.5. To I mean, sorry, to 7.5. Yes. That is to say, they are now trying to generate money from us. That is what Yoruba call for Abusha Abula Lejo. That is, they will collect money from you, and they will now use that money to also entertain, entertain you. you. Why are we like this in this country? Why is it that we are up? And the other time, you know, I was blaming labor. That you should stop asking for minimum wage. As for minimum as for living standard. Living sustainable living standard. To the extent that when you ask for minimum wage, there are some things that we push in that we also withdraw that money, and at the end of the day, you will be back to to to, <coughs> to scare you, zero. You see, um, yeah, it's it's quite unfortunate that Appalling. we continue to deceive ourselves. Appalling. The fact is this, Veronica, national greed. I mean, G R E E D. We not allow our national grid to work. There's nothing you want to do about it. There are too many people um, siphoning money. There are too many people who want to benefit from the system, and we don't need more investment. This is how to prove that we don't need more investment. When President Buhari came on board, the same week he was sworn in, light was constant. Mm -hmm. It defied all mathematical calculation. Mm. That oh, this is the we are on five thousand megawatt. It defied all calculation. But we've been having they, a, a grid collapse, about a hundred of them uh, since then. You, that, that is the news they tell you. But when Buhari came on board, when they didn't know, when they thought that this man was going to come with all manner of uh, yeah. toughness, yeah. they put things to work. In order. But three weeks, when they now saw Adababa is just uh, uh, going uh, in this thing. Was you know, it about they, him? Or because it, we was, have it was who about are in him. Of such it was about him. You see, the day we get it right is the day that somebody will come. Yeah. And, and be decisive. Will, and be decisive. And everybody will get it right. It is not our. Um, our um, what's it called? Our electricity problem mm -hmm. has defied logic. Mm -hmm. It has defied calculation. Mm -hmm. It has defied all manner of things. Because so of if you are pumping money into it, it's like pumping money into private pocket, and mm -hmm. it's very sad. I am not worried about whether we have the capacity to borrow more money. In fairness, I repeatedly say so that every, we know we do have the capacity. But where does the money go, go at to. the end of, of the, the day. day? You see, getting money into government is not about taxing people. I've said it repeatedly, it's about offering service. Mm. When you offer service to the people, the people, especially the people of Nigeria, will be willing to pay. Mm. But now, when you don't offer service, is if, when you mention three billion, even everybody in the studio shouted. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether you, that is the anxiety we talk about. Even when government is sincere, we, we, we have got, got to a point where disbelief has set in. What do we need to build? Just build a gridless society, and we can do that by being decisive. So it has defied all mathematical calculation. It has defied all logic. It's just a man who will sit right and say, the Mabila I talked about, we all saw it. Yeah. Every year there's a budgetary allocation, allocation for that. To it. Just the same way we have budgetary allocation for cutlery and all that thing. That <laughs> and it's as if we are doing party. And next year there will be budgetary allocation. But, but it's because of all of these challenges that we've decided to privatize and the again, sector. And the that's time. where I'm going. That's where I'm even going. Let us take an estuary of all the Jenkos and the, the discos. discos. Who are the people that owns them? Mm. Mm. And to that extent, okay, look at even when, it's, when they started. You mean you are supposed to look at what you want to buy before you buy. You, you have to first of all do your due diligence to know, okay, this thing so, I'm buying is going to be so productive. So how do we resolve this problem? Can you imagine that so, immediately they entered, Central Bank gave them some money. Mm -hmm. Are you aware how, of that? Yes, and they were getting support Why? from the government yeah. now, for regularly. Us, for us, for us to solve this problem, mm. Doctor just said something that pricked me. He said, not until when we solve the problem of our greed, that is G-R-R, I mean G-R-W-E-D, -E the problem of our greed, 
will not GRID be will, not, will be not be solved. Oh, interesting. So no, no, we do that. Let me quickly uh, put this in. Quickly, you quickly. see, what government has done over time, including state government, is that they make everybody believe that civil servant and the people in government mm. cannot make things work. Mm. And they paint the picture that it is only private individuals that can make it work. Mm. So they will set the idea of uh, privatization. Uh, Public-private partnership with yeah. you, and they will go through the back door and bring their friend. Yeah. So right. indirectly, the money still goes back. And even the so so civil yeah. servants, they still bring them in until until uh, we solve our greed problem. Yes, the, the greed other problem. issue will not, not be resolved. resolved. Yeah. I have with me in the studio leadership and communication strategist Dr. Wonjon and political technocrat Dr. Dio Kayode. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. Good morning. Yes. Good to be here. All right, so we'll take a look at the stories in the newspapers this morning. We have that of the News Direct. It says suspend uh, charges on USSD code, uh, MFLA, uh, Patomi, others, uh, others banks and telecom operators. That's according to the News Direct. We'll move to the blueprint. It says Sans X chief judge on Atiku's Supreme Court journey. Nobody can dictate to CJN on final composition. San opposition parties, uh, say opposition parties, position laughable. The Daily Trust says here, 40 years after federal government's 2 trillion Naira Mambila power project yet to begin, 2.6 billion Naira budgeted for compensation others. That's according to the Daily Trust. The Daily Times says here, anxiety as federal government sets, uh, sets to borrow a uh, fresh $3 billion dollars. And the rider says 5.864 trillion naira spent so far by LBJ, GJ Buhari to re rejuvenate sector with little to show. The Daily Sun says CBN stress test fallout. Banks in secret merger talks. Fair grips depositors. No cause for alarm assures MFLA and DIC. This day newspaper says battle for implementation of minimum wage moves to state. Governor's non-committal on commencement date await federal government's circular on agreement with Labour. That's according to this day newspaper. So we will stick with the story in the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. It says here, CBN stress fallout, banks in secret merger talks, uh, federal affairs grip uh, depositors, no cause for alarm, assure Emefiele and the IC. That's in the Daily Sun this morning. Gentlemen, banks in secret merger talks, did we see this coming? We have always known over time that, uh, except if we want to lie, that Nigerian banks are not as heady as most of the times as they declare okay. um, um, at the end of each year. They are only feeding fat on the ignorance of many of us by deducting money here and there, and at the end of the day, they send you a message on your birthday, mm -hmm. they still take money and all, the, and all that. So if you look at these, in reality, people like us are not surprised because I've always known that it's going to get to a point that Nigeria will become, will become more, Nigerians will become more accountable to themselves by asking basic questions as to how their monies move. Right. And when you get to this point, then there's going to be a lot of troubles for the bank. I mm. think uh, on paper, Nigerian banks are doing very well. At the end of the year, they, declare, reality, fan, you know, they, de they declare fantastic uh, mm. uh, end of the year results and all that. But in reality, People in the Central Bank of Nigeria know that they are not as, uh, as good as they are portraying them. Now, you see, the first question we need to ask ourselves is, what kind of activities are our bankers involving themselves within the economic growth of the nation? What investments are they involved with? When an individual goes there, to go and borrow money for all these uh, SMEs, yes. they will problem. ask you, go and bring, probably, the death certificates of your great-great-grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> unlike, unlike in other better climes, whereby even as a university graduate, you can go to the bank, walk to the bank. This is my proposal. And they will look into it. And they will attach somebody to you. OK, go ahead. Do this, all right? And as time goes on, they keep on advising you until... There will be someone until, on your case. Until, yeah, until your business grows to a level of which years you can now stand on your own. But our bank said, what do we see? Most of the time, 
You even see them removing, giving you unnecessary debit notice. I, I, I can talk. I can talk of my own experience with a, back, a particular bank. I've already returned your eleven thousand or so. Fifteen thousand. We are still on it, but I won't mention their name now. I won't mention their name now. Now imagine if a bank, as they are removing like two two thousand, three three thousand, from like two hundred thousand customers. You know how much that one will be, and at the end of the day, they will not put it in their list because they know that the judicial system here. It's very expensive. Do you understand? Now, you cannot say you want to take them to court because, of, but I've told them, I said the narrative will change with you, me. You, you, you see, apart from you know, even that, apart from that. And then they will not be declaring bogus, bogus Profits. profit that is not there. <laughs> then even imagine the head there, the Emefeli. I refuse, I mean, I've stopped believing in him. Why? If you can be telling me that for us to grow our GDP, you have to tax the people. GDP is about production. It's about production. So what are you producing to, imp to increase, to improve on our GDP? You see, um, I, I think uh, we should begin to redefine our banking process. And the relationship. Yes, and it begins from, from production. If you look at the economy of China or perhaps some of this economy that have been able to move from developing economy to advanced economy, economies. You discover that one thing they've done is that they've paid attention to SMEs. Okay. So we must have the orientation that the essence of the bank is not to collect money from the poor and give to the rich. Because what they've done over time is to tell the poor man that bring your money, we will put interest on it. And the poor man gets to the bank and puts his money there, and at the end of the day, he doesn't get interest. Mm. But the money put in by the poor man, the rich man comes there to take to it, take and it. he never pays and back. Never pay and back. it becomes a bad debt on the government and the bank. So when we redefine the banking process, it's going to create a lot of believability. As we speak now, either we like it or not, majority of bankable Nigerians are still not using the bank. You may say, ha, but that's the truth. People in my village, because they do not have trust in your banking process, yeah. if I send 10,000 from here, maybe 9,000 something will get to the mm. village. Some amount of money will have got missing on the road oh, in the name know. of charges. So when we redefine the process of our banking, when we redefine the mentality of those that are in our banking system to know that they are supposed to care for the SMEs and bring your interest to single digit interest. We don't need if, we don't need prayer point if to we have agree to, on that. <coughs> if the bank, <coughs> excuse me, if the banks have to redefine their process, uh, what about the bank of industry? It's there Ooh. for the SMEs. Oh, oh, don't let us go there. The first because if you go to bank of that the bank of industry now, we'll be mentioning names. Do you understand? Out of out of one thousand and one things that they're supposed to do, when they are now able to do about ten. They will now bring it to the, to the media and be showing it. And even, the, I'm sorry to say this, the media people, they are not even helping matters. Okay. Because at the end of the day, they don't even say what exactly is happening there. They, they bring out the one they want them to see. They don't do their investigative journalism as regards what is happening in, in, in Bank of Industry. In, in, in reality, in reality, um, you know, um, the bank of industry has really tried okay. for me. I think in reality, because I've seen one or two interventions, but our population, we, we, we kill the bank. The population of Nigeria is so growing that it's so big that no one particular bank can no, actually no. take care of our okay. problem. So the essence of commercial bank, let the bank of industry do what it's supposed to do. Let people like us who may not want to go to bank of industry and body the bank, walk into the commercial bank, even at the point that you have all your documents intact. The bank will still be, uh, will, will, will still be okay. dribbling you. As okay. regards that population so you are saying it's, it's is growing. Bad. If to say... Every one of them is doing what they are supposed to do. They are, they are big enough to take care of the whole population. All of but us as Nigerians, population? we are what not doing what we are supposed to do. So it's Based not a problem on of the because bank. Of, okay. of us. Because now, of the now, system. Now, look at that. Mm. That's so why when you get to my 12, capacity. Capacity. Is when, that's collapse. why when you get to my okay. 12 there, Ambode built something there to prevent people from <laughs> killing themselves, from jumping. <laughs> but people if you still, get, if still you get there, they destroy yes, it. Yes, they they, yes, down, they exactly. destroyed everything. So it's That's a general system. Okay, okay, but but, but let, looking at these banks now, <laughs> in major talks now, NDIC and the CBN have assured customers of their funds and it's safe. But do we have anything to fear? But in the past, in the past, they have been saying that. 
what have been the experiences of the people? Mm. For instance, when, uh, uh, what is it now? This bank, First Inland Bank, okay. was matched with another bank. Okay, everybody knows that bank. Those of us that bought shares in First Inland Bank, for instance, I bought share of close to, close to two point something million Naira in uh, First Inland Bank. And at the end of the day, they gave me how much? 200 and something thousand. Hmm. You know, the, the, Do you understand? Yes, so when, when, when you are really talking about all these things, people are becoming so worrisome as you guys this. The, sa if, the safety you know? of our money, sorry, sir, let me quickly come in. The safety of our money really is not a problem. They've assured the people, I think you will still get there. I'm not talking about people. Yeah, you still get I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about shareholders. I don't have, yeah, but I don't, have, if I, if I don't have knowledge of that. But if you put your money in any of these banks, I think you will still get your money. But the fear is this. On whose expenses? Mm. Is it because at the end of the day, is it the intervention of government that will give you back your money? If it is the intervention of government, it shows that oh, abula to the shabula exactly. because government got their money through, through you, you and okay. I. Right. So they use that government money to bail the bank out. That's what I me mean, I'm afraid of. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Head straight to the papers now, and I begin with News Direct. Suspend charges on USSD code Mephile Pantami orders banks, telecom operators. We move to the front page of the Blueprint. Sans uh, ex-chief judge on Atiku Supreme Court journey. Nobody can dictate to CJN on panel composition. Say opposition party's position laughable. On the front page of the Daily Trust. 40 years after, federal government's 2 trillion naira Mambila power project yet to begin. 2.6 billion naira budgeted for compensation others. To the Daily Times now, power anxiety is federal government sets to borrow fresh $3 billion, uh, $5.864 trillion spent so far by OBJ, GEG, Buhari to rejuvenate sector with little to show. Stakeholders bemoan unimpressive power supply, demand improved supply. Our challenges by TCN, Jenko's Discos. On the front page of the Daily Sun, CBN stress test fallout, banks in secret merger talks, fear groups depositors, no cause for alarm, assures MFLA NDIC. And finally, on the front page of this day newspaper, battle for implementation of minimum wage moves to states. Governors non-committal on commencement date awaits federal government secular on agreement with labor and that's the story gentlemen we will be looking at at this moment uh it's not yet uhuru mm. the fight still continues mm. uh, the government and labor had agreed co uh, commencement of implementation october the 31st but you see uh, which is some weeks or days away days, days mm. away so but then uh, we haven't heard from state governments uh, with regards to when they will start implementation of this money and so we're worried uh, nigerians are worried well i'm speaking on behalf <laughs> of nigeria <laughs> at this point when will this commence because this battle has been nigeria, on including you now yes uh, it, it, it affects you too now one way or the other one way or the other yes directly. Not, not directly uh, will, you not affect, will you not affect your station <laughs> your station too is part of nigeria and then your station must implement a minimum wage <laughs> But seriously, gentlemen, the question, what do you foresee? A showdown with uh, labor when it comes to uh, agreement as to where this implementation, it seems the governors are yet to commit because initially they had said that this amount you've been talking about, we cannot pay. Let's start with you, uh, Dr. Kayode. Uh Two sides of the coin, coin now. I had in one of the news this morning that the Ekiti State Governor, who is also the chairman of uh, NGF, yes. is about to call for a meeting of probably advising his uh, colleagues that they should meet, that they should meet mm -hmm. as regards on uh, how this thing will be implemented. And probably advising them that this thing, this 30,000 should be implemented. But on the other side of it, Government has said, federal government has said, implementation must start 30th October. So, labor too will be looking at, okay, that ceiling of 30th 
October 31st, okay. 31st October must be sacrosanct. And on which the governors, as he's saying, they want to see mm -hmm. how to implement it. For how long will they see how to implement it? But some that had argued, what? if you would allow me, some have argued that uh, in the agreement, the governor should have been part of the discussion. They were not there. No doubt about it. They should have been. But even at that, if you look at it from the beginning, the governors were not even agreeing to that 30,000. Absolutely. They were giving that. below. Mm. They were looking at below. 25,000. And mark you, you will see, mark this one that I want to say. Most of these governors, they are not looking outside the box other than what they are taking from Abuja. And a few months back... The system around us, that give them the room to even think outside the that box. That is why all of them are supposed to have agreed by telling the federal government that they must be looking outside the box. <laughs> but you, because most of them, they believe in just sitting down. After, at the end of the month, they go to Abuja. But now the issue is, they, are, they were talking about increasing the amount of money that comes to them. Mm. In, in the past few months, they have been arguing that out. They will now tell Labour, look, this is how much we are having. Like in those days, when Fire Share collects his uh, monthly whatever from Abuja, you put it on the table. Call the Labour people. How do, we, how do we distribute <laughs> this? <laughs> so let, let, the, governor don't mind, the governor might also start doing that. And at the end of the day, the 30,000 Naira may not be feasible. Oh. Uh, Dotson. There are governors that will pay without um, necessarily having to wait for Labour to beg them or meetings here and there. I know a few of them that will pay. And I know a few of them that um, their workers will still go on strike. As, uh, that's after the 31st of October. But, but, again, but you know the, the no work, no pay issue that yes, has also it, lingered. It, yes, it will so continue. So uh, on it to whose benefit? It will, it will continue to linger. You see, what we have advocated for really is that why do we make minimum wage a legal thing? It's because of our deteriorating economy. Mm. If we have, um, because at the end of the day, you just discover that it's just an increase in salary. It does not translate to better standard of living. Mm -mm. So if we, apart from me, I'm not even looking at the issue of minimum wage because it has no effect. It has more negative effect than positive effect. Yeah. Mm. Inflation. Because, yes, inflation has happened already now as we speak. Mm. The, the, and the percentage of people that will be directly affected by minimum wage is small compared to the larger community of people mm. that will be negatively impacted. Mm. And every person under the bridge in my trough now hears that the government has increased salary. And he too is looking for a way of taking his part of the minimum uh, of the minimum. Of the so everything goes out. So I think we should go beyond um, having to sit down every five, five years and say we want to work on the wages. The, it is the duty of the government to make Nigeria livable. It is not something that we are, we are happy about. Either you, you belong to APC or PDP, that your country is one of the worst places to live mm. on the planet Earth. So let's concentrate on making the economy work. But are you well, well, about can you see Dr. now coming back to my argument the other day when I said workers should always ask for minimum living standard. But they, it's, that it's is why there is labor, and that's where I am going yeah. to. Le uh, labor's engagement is also the challenge here because some have said the, the direction labor is looking at is not really the no. way to go. No, no, you see, they they don't, don't learn from their mistakes. This, no, on this, we may not totally blame labor. What led them to always, um, what led them to, in the first place, or um, to always uh, wanting to demand a minimum wage? It's because they have seen over time that the economy is not working. Mm -mm. As yes, over time. Of course, the that's the only thing they can do. That's the only thing they can do. That's the only thing they can do. They can do better. Not, it is not the duty of labor to force government to work on the economy. No. It is the duty of every one of us. The and two. it is also the responsibility of government. Labor can always remind them, no doubt Champion about that, but course. you and yes. I can also remind the government that no matter how much you pay, if the economy is bad, you are also still driving people to All poverty. Right. You see, the issue right. is this. We have Labor to go. supposed to know that ever since when they ask for minimum wage, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Because All right. the, it increases so many things. So they should now change the narrative to and sustainable minimum living standards. Right, we have to live it at this point. Demand and cobble will not affect anything. It's a demand that must work directly on the economy. All right, uh, Dr. John, Dr. Diakaidi, gentlemen, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Yeah.
You're watching TVC Breakfast and we're streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag 